All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Dirty Tooth Talk. In addition to the published author, uh, Chema Alonzo, right here, we have a special guest that's going to be presenting with him, Kevin Mitnick. So please welcome both of them to the TourCon stage. Well, hello, hackers. How is going, TourCon? It's, uh, you're better than the rest. I saw you having beer, so I'm not sure you are going to understand the talk, but very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here again. I was in 2008, and, and the conference is being big today. So at that time, we were a couple hundred people, and today there are 500, so it's, it's wonderful to see how the community is, is growing. And I was in, in, in the valley this week, and we had a dinner, and I picked up Kevin to, to come here to, to Torcon, and we are going to deliver the talk together. My, uh, I didn't want to show, to give more, uh, many information about the talk, but in the end, probably all of you have been reading the, the, the description of the talk, and it's, uh, it's quite a pity, because uh, the magic is, uh, is when you don't know what, is, what you are going to see. And the real, the real title of the talk is, is this. It's only rock and roll, uh, but I like it because it's a talk about music. How many of you like music? Okay. So let's see how many of you are brave enough to prove that your music is the better, the best. So we have... Well, we have a present if you will connect to our device. To, and whoever wins by playing their favorite song will get one of my lock-picking business cards. So... Who wants one of these? Yeah, one of these, and you just... Okay. This is very easy. Okay. Here we You have need to have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> no Androids. Well, here uh, we have a Bluetooth speaker. It's a very well-known Marshall Bluetooth speaker. Do you know this device? These are the best, Marshall speakers. And we need yeah. someone to, to play the role with us. We need someone to play some music in that device with an iPhone, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe, we promise you. You can trust Kevin, you know it. Uh, the truth is that in the end, we are going to do something, but it's not dangerous, we promise. And after the talk, we are going to remove all data. If you have private information, <laughs> you should connect we right now. We don't have now. any data, just ignore that comment. So we don't have any data. Any volunteer? Come here. Please, <laughs> a big clap for her. April. Now she had some, some pre-knowledge of what we're gonna do, so. <laughs> well, this is very simple. There is a, come here, come here, come here. I we won't bite. I want to see your private picture, come here. <laughs> no, no, just connect to a, to a Bluetooth. Go back up. So it's connected to a Bluetooth device. It's a Bluetooth speaker. How many of you, any time in your life, have connected to a Bluetooth speaker? Huh. Why worry? There it is. Then now. <laughs> <laughs> and select some music. So is it connected? It's connected. Okay, so select some music. There you go. I got to play your favorite song. Hopefully our volume turned up okay. No, that's definitely the speaker. Are you connected to the Bluetooth? Yeah, double check the connection. It's not no, connected. it's not connected. Go try to connect again. Just yeah, dirty too. No, that's not the other one. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Still bomb. Still bomb. What is still bomb? Mm -hmm. It's not showing up on hers. Kilburn. Kilburn. There are too many speakers here. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's connected. I, I show it on mine. But, yeah, Kilburn. you don't want to hear any of my music. <laughs> you Kilburn. see, like, it's Kilburn here. Mm -hmm. No, probably it's... I turned it off and turned it back on again. Yeah, probably it's there. You are connected to a lot of Bluetooth devices, I see. There's well, it's not connected, they're just... Hang on, try, again. try turning it off and on. 
that always works. Any other volunteer with a real iPhone? <laughs> Now, so April, I, I met her in Jason Street in Beijing um, last week, and I don't know if she purchased her iPhone from, from Shenzhen, because then it's not really an iPhone. So maybe Bluetooth is messed up, so we'll see. The problem is that she's a, she has a very long list of Bluetooth devices, and is looking for all of them, and then is looking for the new one. That's Any a ton of devices. Anybody else, by the way, have an iPhone? <laughs> Connect to the Kilburn. Right, who's connect, connect to Kilburn? Can you see it? Can you Kilburn? see the device? Kilburn, connect to it. Kilburn. Yeah, it's not on his either. Turn it off and on. Well, I think he just dropped my... No, you, you don't want to pair it, no. One second. You turn it off, I have to reconnect to it. Okay. Yeah, We're going to turn it off and on. <clears throat> it's this one. It's that device, Kilburn. Yeah, it's strange. I have it on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm already connected to the Kilburn. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> now you can see. All right, see. now try. Wait, let's see. Do you see it now? Or do you see Kilburn? You want to try connecting? Let me see if I see it. Well, this is the most difficult part. Oh, that <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it's showing up in my devices because I was connected to it in the past. Not connected. Yeah. Do you see it? Do you see it? Any of you can see Anybody see, see uh, Bluetooth yeah. device Kilburn? Connect to Kilburn and play music. It's quite simple. A good one. <laughs> reggaeton is forbidden. You can play any music but reggaeton. <laughs> <laughs> Does it show that you connected to it? Maybe you are uh, very far away from the, <laughs> from the speaker. If you can uh, come closer. Can you come closer? <laughs> Actually, if you are already connected, everything is done, but playing music is good. <laughs> is it there? I can hear it. Is it there? Yes. Yeah, the volume I turned all the way up. Volume? I don't know why. We've been. How do you play music? And it's weird because I'm not seeing the device either uh, on my phone because I, no, but I basically forgot the device and tried to reassociate. Well, okay, you're already connected. Okay. Okay. Uh, see, already connect. I already connect. Lot of people already connect, <laughs> and that's enough. But uh, the good point is that we wanted to listen uh, the music. So. They we got other device the here. Yeah. This is a they can connect to the Pi if you want. Instead. Yeah, yeah. We got another device here, which is a, a Raspberry Pi, which is doing exactly the same. It's dirty to the speaker. If you can put the audio from, from the audio jack and someone, uh, and someone connect to, to it, I'm going to connect to the... I got exactly the same. It's an iPhone, nothing special. And I'm going to connect to to the pipe, just doing a normal click. And that's a dirty tooth speaker, if you see that on your Bluetooth list. Any, any of you connected to the dirty tooth speaker? I did, but now I don't see it. Yeah, I see but it. Did, did, uh, I did earlier, but I checked the audio. Are you already connected? Not anymore. Not anymore? Any connected to the device? Yeah, this is interesting, so I try to connect and it refuse. You might have. Well, it sucks when a demo doesn't work straight off the bat, but... Well, let's see how many of you have been connected. The problem is the audio, not the, not the connection. But uh, let me explain what had been happening uh, behind the scenes because it's quite, quite interesting. So one of the, the good things with iPhone is 
that is a device that is supposed to be very secure. It has a lot of protection. It has co-signing, it has approval from Apple to install new apps, it has a very good encryption algorithms to store data into the hard drive, etc. The problem with devices like, like iPhone is that once that you connect the device to any channel, you are exposing the, the security. That's, uh, that's very easy to understand. And in iPhone, there are a lot of tricks to, to take information from it or to, to hack the device. You can do a lot of things with Siri if you are using Siri with the lock screen. You can hack the full iPhone from the Windows machine or an OS machine if it's already paired. We've seen in the past a lot of malware that was, was using the pairing connection with a Windows machine to jailbreak the iPhone and install malware. If uh, you are making a backup in the iCloud, you are going to have exactly the same problem if you don't have a, a secure mechanism to protect iCloud. Uh, we've seen a lot of celebrities having troubles with the picture that had been stolen, stolen from the iCloud. When you connect to a telecommunication uh, network, like GSM, et cetera, you can be hacked using fake BTS. We've seen in the past a lot of, uh, a lot of attacks using jammers against the 3G or 4G connection to get a, two, uh, a 2G connection. And the same with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, applica application, et cetera. One of the things that the iPhone has is, is the Bluetooth connection. And the implementation that we got in iOS with the Bluetooth is quite special. It, it is full of usability features that you can use in your advantage if you want to extract information from, from a target. So first thing is that the Bluetooth uh, stack, that iPhone. Got it. Uh, OK. But, <laughs> so it took a few times of rebooting it, but we finally got it. But that's just enough. All right, so. We tested, okay. I don't know, 20 times, but <laughs> the last one failed. When you're so, on stage, it fails, of course. In, in, in the case of iPhone, we got uh, one implementation of the Bluetooth stack, which is uh, the 2.1. That means that one specific feature that was added to the Bluetooth stack in 2007, that was the first version uh, of iPhone, mm, was in there, which is the possibility of do a Bluetooth connection with any device without a, a pairing token, which is good for usability because you don't need to, to type any token or you don't need to check a number in other device. Just click on it and you are connected. That is exactly what you've been doing a lot of time in Bluetooth speaker. Look for the Bluetooth speaker, click on it, and that's all, which is good for usability. But one, one problem with this is that when you got a Bluetooth connection, you are not having always the same Bluetooth connection. Exactly. And when two, when, when two devices are connected over Bluetooth, what's really critical here is the profile, because the profile whoops, essentially gives permissions of what that connection is allowed to do. So it's kind of like uh, meeting a girl, right? And you might be having the friendship profile, and then all of a sudden, maybe it could switch to the friends with benefits profile, you may or may not know about it, but then if it switches to the marriage profile, you can be in big trouble. Or maybe not, I don't know. But the types of um, profiles, they're up here, I don't know if you can see them clearly, but it's much easier over here, we, where we can stream audio, we can uh, control audio-visual devices, everyone knows about the headset profile, connect to headsets, uh, hands-free for your cars, What's going to be important later on in the presentation is this profile here, the phone book uh, access profile. And uh, a profile I'd love this to work with, but doesn't, uh, unfortunately, and Chema will get into this, is the map profile where we could actually get access to uh, text messages. So <clears throat> The idea is that when we are reading that iPhone is supporting Bluetooth, in fact, what we are reading is that iPhone is supporting our set of Bluetooth profiles. In the case of iPhone on iPad, we have different uh, profiles that are implemented. From the uh, iPhone uh, 4 uh, and later, we have hands-free profile, 
phone book access profile, advanced audio distribution profile, audio video, etc. personal data network, human interface device, and messaging uh, audio uh, profile, me messaging access profile. All of them are available from iPhone 4 to the iPhone that we have uh, today. And depending on the profile that you connect to any device, that device is going to be able to do th well, the, um, a set of things on iPhone. So first thing that we got with this usability feature is? Right, so what's interesting with the iPhone over here is when you get a list of uh, potential Bluetooth uh, devices to connect to, it doesn't give you much information. In contrast, with the Android, we get a little bit more information with the icon. It's not so much more important, but it's interesting that the Android gives you a little bit more information. Second point is that uh, when you connect to one device, if that device wants to have a secure connection, it's going to require a temporary pairing token, a pairing token. That pairing token is quite interesting. If you are able to read only a name in the Bluetooth list about the device you are connecting to, you don't have you are not 100% sure that you are connected to, connecting to the right device. So if someone impersonate the name of the device that you are using every day in, in your bathroom or in your kitchen, you are going to connect exactly uh, to, to the same name. Probably it's not going to be automatic because there is our protection with the physical address, but people can connect to, to it. On the other hand, when you have uh, a device that requires a pairing token, you are forced to look to that device and be sure that you are connecting to, to the right one. Right. And normally, at least with iOS, not only does Apple have to approve access to the application because they must sign it before you can install it on your phone, but you must give explicit access to the apps. For example, to access your phone book or your contacts here. Um, Later, we'll show you how to bypass that. So, when you connect to, you install an app, and that app try to get access to your contact leaks, you need, you have an explicit permission. On the other hand, when you connect to one device, a Bluetooth device that wants to access to your contact list, the answer by default is yes. That means that without any pairing token, any uh, any alert or any ex special permission, any device, if that device has the right Bluetooth profile, can get access to your contact list. Right, so if you do this with an Android device, Android actually pops up a message warning you that uh, a profile has been changed. Unfortunately, it's in, uh, I'm not, uh, it's in Spanish, right? Because I guess, Spanish is better. Spanish is better. Yeah, you know. Spanish is better. <laughs> well, here we got a, a, a small video about what is the behavior in Android if one Bluetooth device is trying to get access to your contact list. So here we are opening the configuration area. It's in Spanish because Spanish is better. So <laughs> right now it's looking. It's look. It's the new version. It's, it's the P. So as you can see, there is a speaker with a headset. And you connect to it, it's supposed to be a Bluetooth speaker. But at some time in the future, that device decide to change the profile. Why not? You are connected to one device, and you select the profile you want to use. In this example, as you can see, Android saw a warning message saying, OK, something happening, but that device that wanted to be your friends with benefits now want to get married with you. <laughs> okay, so um, over here, when when you're uh, looking at the when during the uh, connection process, when it's doing the connection, there's like no warning here. But when it switches the profile, it actually gives an option whether or not to share the contacts. But typically, what uh, what happens is. Nobody is actually staying on this particular screen on the phone. They've already switched to something else, so they don't actually see what's happening in the background. So once they connect, it's really uh, nothing else matters. Yeah. 
So the, there, there, it's, it's over. This is the video of exactly the same that we've seen in Android, but in iPhone. Yeah. As you can see, it's in a perfect Spanish. <laughs> and now we are connecting to one device that is supposed to be a, a Bluetooth speaker. You don't have any information, just the name. So here's, uh, here's the speaker, you connect to it. That's it, you are already connected. Everything is perfect. No extra information on the configuration options. So we go to, to switch the profile and later, by default, is sharing your contact list. If you are there when it changes, you can watch it. If not, you cannot. So, uh, this is for you, you, you tell it. Okay, um, so basically just the, uh, the steps here is uh, the, the, the device is discoverable, um, uh, high in the Bluetooth speaker, it goes through the pairing process with no, you don't need a, a pairing pin, uh, you're paired, and then after a few seconds, then we switch the profile, and then we get access, we switch it from the uh, advanced audio distribution profile to the phone book profile, then we're able to basically sync your phone book, your call log, what's your call log, missed calls, received calls, uh, calls, uh, phone numbers you called to, we're able to sync that, we're able to store the data, and then exfiltrate it, then we can actually switch back to the speaker profile. So it's a few seconds, the data's stolen, it's switched back, the victim doesn't know any better. So, on this, uh, the Marshall speaker, uh, what we have here is that uh, uh, with the original speaker we have a Bluetooth board, this uh, Bluetooth module actually has to be switched out. No, because the, uh, to access this module, it uses it's a proprietary, their proprietary software, so we actually have to switch it out to a SparkFun Bluetooth module. But this is kind of the diagram of the whole thing. So basically, in this particular speech speaker, the Bluetooth module is switched out. We put a Team C in, uh, obviously program it with the Arduino framework. We have an SD connector, because once the information is stolen from the device, we store it on the yes, mini, uh, I mean the micro SD card. Then we have, um, we have a GSM module that we're able to exfiltrate the data. And what we're gonna show you in a moment is we have this debug module that lets us use screen to, base, be, to be able to connect to the device. So we can essentially like get a shell on the device and control it that way. So over here, um, uh, we'll get into this in a second, but in, on the device itself, we have mainbook.vcf, and what that is, that's actually the contact list of the victim that we've stolen from the device, and then we have the incoming calls, the outgoing calls, the missed calls. Uh, it's stored in the device's directory, and this is a CRC32 CRC of the MAC address. So basically for each device, it's gonna be uh, a different directory it's created, and then it's gonna store um, the status, the main book, <laughs> incoming, outgoing, and missed calls. What's interesting, is how this is set up. If an iOS device connects, then we're gonna switch the profile. If a, no, a non-iOS device connects, and we can tell by the OUI, uh, right, from Apple, if a non-iOS device connects, we just play music. We don't actually switch to the phone book uh, profile. So, let's see on, on the demo. Yep. Let's see uh, how let, many people. I'm gonna have to reconnect to it, unfortunately. Ah, you have been connected also? Good. Thank you for sharing your contact list with us. <laughs> well, it's just but you, you won the business card. <laughs> <laughs> she already has one. <laughs> so, so right now I'm going to connect to the debug module in the uh, Marshall speaker. So we're just waiting. It takes a second for it to come up. There we go. Uh, now, you're going to see the, uh, the pin. Please don't connect. Yeah, unfortunately. You're a hack. Yeah. Did it work? No. What the fuck? Okay. Was it, is that the correct pin? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Uh, are you already connect? No. No. Something happened in the demo. Are you connected right now? <laughs> Stop messing with it. <laughs> I was gonna turn off uh, the mirroring to connect to the pin, but I trust you guys to let us do the demo. 
Now, I don't know if I'm making a mistake by trusting an audience of hackers, but we'll see. Try it again. Yeah, so hold on a second. Yeah. Well, someone's gonna say with it. No, it's uh, on. No. Turn okay. it off and on. I, I, I already Don't mess with it. Come on. Because then I can't show you where, how the information is stored, and you just stop the demo. It doesn't make much sense. Is that the right pin? Is it one nine or nine one? Sure. Let me try nine one. I don't think it's nine one though. Let's try. Is it just that this didn't fail. I don't remember the pin. Is that it? Seven one zero nine. Seven one zero nine. I think so, but I'm not sure. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Ah, you are connected. No, someone's messing with it. No, that's not, that's not it. Oh, wait. No, it's not connected. Uh, what's the pin? You, you, uh, I yeah, think, I think you so. look it up. Uh, come on, come on. Mac OS now. Someone's messing with it from the audience. As he's looking up the pin, uh, so so basically, once we connect using the debug module, what we're able to do is, yeah, yeah, obviously you have to put a SIM card in the device, so. MSTAT is a command where we can actually make sure before actually doing the attack that we have connection to the mobile operator, okay? How you connect to the debug module is simply using screen. Um, there you go, you just gotta look at, on your Mac OS, you gotta look in the, in the dev directory uh, for the actual device, and then the baud rate is 115-200. Uh, BT stat lets you look at uh, the status of Bluetooth, and P stat, you can see the devices that actually connected in the past. Seven so what zero one nine. Seven zero one nine. So let's try it again. One more shot. Starting failed. Seven zero one nine. Is the is the operating system? The operating system. It was working over there, so I don't know. Let's see. You want to try pairing it from yours? Yeah, see if you can do it. Okay. We can continue. Okay. Very good. So I'll try it from yours. And we'll continue. No, I think we can. Okay. okay. Um, I'll explain the next slide as you're doing that if you want. Connect to, to the Bluetooth and if it's this. <coughs> well, uh, in, any, in this case, we did it with this specific uh, Bluetooth speaker and one important thing is that it, uh, if when you want to replace the Bluetooth stack from one uh, speaker to put your own Bluetooth st uh, stack, you need to connect the, the, um, the new Bluetooth stack to the main board. And in this case, it, was, uh, it runs a uh, proprietary code, and we needed to do reverse uh, of the signals that were using the original Bluetooth stack, and we needed to, to build up this uh, small uh, interface to connect the the thing see with the Arduino and the rest of the other things <clears throat> and in the end what is happening how it works is exactly like this video which is the plan C if the demo was failing which is like this on the left side we got connected on the left side we got the the iPhone and we are connecting to the speaker and right now we play music that's all Good music. Nobody knows now. Like a wheel. Can you read Don't this spend it. Nobody ask me around. Hey, Satan. Pay my dues. On the right side, you can see the, the panel. It's a web panel. Uh, we are copying all the 
contact list, the missed calls, etc. And we are uploading this to the to a panel in our website. And you are, as you can see, we are re retrieving all the information. In the end, this information is in the format in which Apple is storing your contact list, which is, which is BC cards. And this is the format in which we are retrieving the, the information. It's a BC card, it's uh, version 2.1. If you are familiar with this format, uh, we are now in, in version three and are you connected? Well, the problem is, is with your Spanish keyboard. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Continue with this. All right, great. <laughs> well, I tried to figure out how to do all the character sets with his um, keyboard. I wasn't listening to what he said. Did you cover UID zero? Did you? Yeah, no. Okay. So on what's cool with the V cards, what we look for first is UID zero. Why? Because that's the owner of the device, right? So if they store their own uh, card, we now know who the owner is and we have their specific information, which might be email address uh, and whatever, any other details they could put in the V card. Um, uh, what else do you want to cover with this slide? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Connect to, connect to, we are connected. What do you need? Here? No, to screen. And a screen. Uh, to the device. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, no worry, Kevin. I, I can connect okay. to right now. So, one important thing is that right now we are in version three, and with the phone book access profile, which is the profile that we are using in this hack, you are supposed to be able to write VC cards into the device. Uh, in this case, we tried, but Apple doesn't, doesn't allow us to, to do it. But uh, we tested only with the phone book access, access profile. And in the new version, which is BC3, do, which is the new, the new standard that Apple is using for the new operating system, you got more information like picture, like notes, like URLs, so information, private information that you are adding to your contact list that is, is stored in the, in the BC format. So the idea is that we retrieve all contact lists to the, to the back end with your phone number, your name, your emails, whatever, and once that you got that data in back end, we do, uh, open source intelligent enrichment. So with the phone number, we look for the Facebook profiles, for the uh, LinkedIn account, etc. So, so in the end, you can uh, create a, a very nice map of the social life of one target. And this is the video with what is happening behind the scenes when someone connect to, to this speaker. The first part is exactly the same, but there are two iPhone screens in one of them, we are going to, to maintain the screen in the options of the Bluetooth uh, device. So right now we are connecting, and then on the right side, we look for the option. As you can see, at the beginning, there's nothing. The left side. And then it changes. So that's the whole story. You connect to any Bluetooth device, just clicking on that, and that device can be stalling your, your data uh, anytime. So in order to do it uh, easy to implement, not to be using, doing uh, reverse engineering to the, to the hardware, we created something very easy, which is a, a, a distribution for the, uh, for the Raspberry Pi. The idea is quite simple. There is a Debian package that you install in your, in your Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi becomes a rogue Bluetooth speaker, and it's very easy to manage. This uh, console, we are installing the package. Then we are going to run this one minute video, Kevin. Yeah, that's what we're connected to. Okay. Yeah. So then, we run the service, and it's working, and right now it's like a normal Bluetooth speaker. The only thing that you need to do is to put a, a real speaker in the audio jack, and the rest is exactly the same. You connect to the, to the speaker, and at some point, Raspberry Pi is going to, to change the profile to play music. 
we're going to play the video that we've been seeing so, uh, before. And behind the scenes, all data. Quite simple, let's do the connection to the Raspberry Pi. Okay. We lost a probability, let me see if I saw the show. And of course we're disconnected. Okay. A lot of devices. <laughs> yeah, lots of different devices. So, um, which one do you want to look at? The, uh, the, the latest one? Anyone. No. So, we'll look at that. No, it's, it's a file, just. Oh, okay, and this is a file. I mean, it used to be a yeah, device. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, oh nine. That's a day to do. Um, just look at anything. Okay. Oh, this is mine. <laughs> yeah, this is my phone. Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my girlfriend's number back there. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, this is the call log. Oh, okay. She yeah. Replace the number. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So now she has to change the number. Yeah, so that's the call log information. Let me see uh, the, the contact list here. What would that, what? Uh, hold that for a sec, I'm sorry. You can use that one. Yeah. Uh, contact list is what's cooler though, is once you get it stored onto the Pi, is on, on the Pi 3 you have Wi-Fi, then using Wi-Fi you send it over to some uh, panel, and I'll show it to you in a moment. So that's f uh, so it's dot phone book. I see. Dot phone book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So here we have great my uh, phone list. <laughs> you are the first one. Wait, is that mine? No, yeah, Joe Grand. Hey, you, take care. Should, uh, Chema, yeah. take care. My yeah. phone is there. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah. So let's go to the panel. This is here. Over here. Uh, let me refresh. Hopefully it's sent it up. Just ping it. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. We got three devices. Right? Okay. So Select. Which, which one do you want to look at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let test this well, basically one. Basically, it's three different devices that connected to the Pi, or to that speaker on the Pi, because now it's exfiltrated the data up to the cloud. So look at one. For the first one, maybe? Yeah, we are connecting through my mobile, so if we connect. Okay. That's mine. That's yours. Yep. So let's use another one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so let. I'm not sure which one I selected. Probably the next one. The, the next second one. Second one. Second one. Are you sure? I, I think I. The first one. First one. Okay. Okay. I don't know which one. I wasn't watching. Slow internet because we're tethered to his Spain uh, Spain SIM card. So uh, Telefonica SIM cards, it's kind of slow. Yeah, it works. Well, that's not mine for sure. Any of you? Has yeah, that's not mine either. Who knew, who, whose is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Well, normal stuff. Well, we, we used wildcard not to show the, the whole number. But we still have it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to, to give you business cards from Kevin Mingley, you know. You know the, this is your prize you know for sharing your data. <laughs> it's like with Facebook. You get a free account, but you get to share your data. <laughs> you know his girlfriend's na uh, number, so. <laughs> 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 well,
Well, this is the idea. It's just a, a, a lot of a small usability features that you can put together to create uh, something like this. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. Uh, things that you can do with this. Uh, well, hack works with any other profile. So you can be changing profiles as you wish, and iPhone is going to tell you nothing. Depending on the th kind of things that you can do with the Bluetooth profile, you can do more or less thing on the device. We are not. Maybe a next version of iOS, they'll uh, turn on the map profile by default. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. We tested yeah. with the map profile, but uh, by default, it's not syncing. Uh, it's not syncing the messaging, which is bad for us, but it's good for, for users. Uh, with this profile, with fo uh, phone book access profile, it's forbidden to for better to, to write the VCAR, which is, is now You good. can imagine what social engineering uh, setups you can do if you could write somebody's contact list and change phone numbers for their existing contacts. That'd be very interesting. And then you couple that with SMS spoofing, right? So you, you can imagine you could probably get compliance and uh, you could use that for some really good pretexting. <clears throat> and the rest, you know it, you, can, you, got, you are connecting to one device that someone gave to you in a conference or as a gift, and it's a big device that right now is only a, a, a Bluetooth that we replace, but you can add a lot of crazy stuff inside the, the box, and you can create whatever, whatever you want. If you want to learn more about that, we wrote a small paper explaining all the usability features. Uh, features that we are using. In the end, we, th we believe that this is a hack and not a bug, but probably could be good for user if you receive an alert when one device you already connected change the profile. But it's an idea, who knows? And that's all. If you, got to, you want to make any question, we are open to it. In Android, when you can connect to one device that is requiring an access, uh, a pairing token or not, but if you connect to one device that is not requiring an, an pairing token and that device change the profile, you receive an alert. So there is like a, a permission that you need to get access from a Bluetooth device to the contact list in an Android. That's it. Well, I, I didn't listen to you very well, but... The, it's hard to hear you speak up a little bit. The profile switches. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were thinking about that, and let's imagine that the default option for iOS is not to sync contact lists. How many users are going to call the call center saying, okay, I cannot connect to my car with my iPhone? So I th uh, my, my belief is that they decide to do this just uh, as a usability feature to, to not having calls to the call center with, uh, with a bad experience. That's my belief. But in the end, they are sacrificing security. There, I got connected finally. So it's really OK, the last demo. Great. Let me Explain the demo. OK. So right now, because we're having some issues with the SIM card here, right now it's trying to upload, exfiltrate. Remember how the data is first stored on the micro SD card? Right now, right now it's trying to exfiltrate it, but it can't to the cloud because we're having a problem with the GSM module in here 
uh, the SIM card cannot connect to the mobile op the local mobile operator. It's having an issue with the roaming. So it's not a problem from Telefonica. It's a problem for the other operators. <laughs> <laughs> so um, right now it's kind of stuck trying to um, upload the data. It's trying to read the file and send it. But as soon as uh, in a moment I'll be able to actually talk to the actual uh, debug module in here and show you what we have, show you that we have the same data. Okay, finally, all right. So I'm just doing a directory. There's a devices directory. Ah. I'm typing too fast, maybe. So here are the different devices, and this is again over here. Where's the pointer? Oh, my pocket. Great. So let me put this up here. So over here, uh, these are the devices that connect. This is the C CRC32 of the actual MAC address of the device. Make this bigger, great. So now we're gonna look and see what's stored in the directory. 41 is something uh, that I don't know. I wanna do 41? Yeah, 41. Five, six, five, Who zero, uh, six, four, four, one. And we'll look at the uh, directory, and we'll have the contact list as mainbook.vcf. So over here, that's their contact list, and here is uh, their missed calls. It doesn't seem they have any incoming or outgoing calls, which is weird. So let's take a look. Might be uh, somebody that knows that they don't want to give, share that information. So let's, ah, this is easier to do it this way. Uh, no, no, I know. No. And main book. Uh, now it's doing that crappy. Okay. Mainbook.vcf. So here's the um, somebody's. Uh, Chris Geyser. Anybody recognize Chris Geyser, Tom Getz? Who's, whose phone is this? Anybody recognize these? What? New friends? New friends, yeah. <laughs> Somebody in the audience had to connect, right? And then we're able to now store the phone book, right? Essentially, the contact list, call logs, and then what happens is every, what is it, couple minutes here, this is trying to connect to the mobile operator. Right now, the SIM isn't registered here locally, so it can't exfiltrate the data. But if we had a prepaid, if we had a SIM card here that was locally in the U.S., it would actually work. Unfortunately, this is not connecting to the local network. Okay, that's all. Thank you very yeah. much for being here. Yeah. Enjoy. Oh, if you, I have a, I brought about 100 of my business cards, which are lockpick sets. If anyone would like one, just come up and I'll be happy to give you one. Uh, and after you get your business card, just FYI, we will have a snack break out in the foyer out there. So please step outside and make sure not to miss that. It's sponsored by Qualcomm. Thank you, Qualcomm. Woot!